Yikes, that's a fresh one. I tell you what, I've never been to another state where I've seen so many people jump out of their cars and rush to help out so quick. Texas is one heck of a place. And I've got bad news for those of us in California. I think Texas is beating out our record as being the state that's the king of automobiles. Texas is actually doing a lot of cool things right now. Dallas is just plain amazing. I just got back from there and everywhere the Texas Department of Transportation are building new freeway interchanges and widening roads. It looks like what Los Angeles must have looked like back in the 1970s. But I'm not here to talk about Texas roads being good. I'm here to talk about Texas roads being really, really bad. <laughs> those stupid sideways uh, traffic signals. Okay, so let's start with the first good thing Texas does. They separate their traffic out. Here in Los Angeles, they widened and widened and widened, and now you have these freeways that have a bajillion lanes, and they're all kind of serve the same purpose. The more lanes you have, the more places you can change lanes, and every time somebody wants to change lanes in front of you, you have to hit your brakes, and the guy behind you has to hit his brakes, and that makes the traffic jam just a little bit worse. Texas fixed that. They chopped it up into three pieces. You've got toll lanes on the left for people who are going long distances or got to be there in a hurry, but they're not just jumping on and off the freeway. You've got the main lanes for people who might be going a couple of miles, one city to the next, and then on the outside, they have feeder roads. I've never seen these outside of Texas. It's like a frontage road, but it's one way. The businesses pop right onto it. Quite often you can take a ramp and slip off and go onto the frontage road, access businesses, access the cross streets that you're wanting to exit the freeway to, and then there are places where you can slip back on. And then at the cross streets, you can just whoop, make a U-turn and come right back around to the one-way road on the other side of the freeway, although I found it kind of confusing when I saw somebody doing it. <laughs> what the? Huh? Now all these U-turns and feeder roads make shopping really convenient. And that is Texas's first big problem. Okay, let's imagine for a minute that this is your freeway and you have a cross street here, so you build a freeway interchange. And then you have about a mile down the road, another exit here, so you build another interchange. Well, you end up with a sphere of influence. People are willing to get off the freeway and drive a short distance to go to tacky places like In-N-Out Burger. I love In-N-Out Burger. Don't tell them I told you it was tacky. Exxon to get gas, that sort of thing. So you get this kind of little area like here, and a little area here, and in between you have houses and parks and schools and other things that look a little more attractive to a city. But in Texas, you build these friggin' feeder roads all along the whole side with places you can get on and off constantly. So what happens? Instead of development just being in these little areas where the cross streets are, you get development along the whole friggin' thing. And all of Texas looks exactly the same. You just drive down this corridor of Whataburgers and Applebee's and, and every Texas town looks the same as a result. It's really, it, it makes Texas look bad. Also, people like me that want to go down the frontage road and stay on the frontage road, but there's a red light ahead. Shh, now you can cheat. As you're coming up on that red, take the on-ramp, go over the bridge, take the next off-ramp, and you skip the light. Hey, hey, Texas style. And then you get out into the countryside and feeder roads go bananas. Some of them are one way, some of them are two way. Sometimes there's random yield signs where people slip weird ways on and off the freeways and it's really easy to accidentally get on the freeway going the wrong way. Of course, there's fences. Every other self-respecting state puts these in to keep people from getting on the freeway in places that they're not supposed to. Not in Texas. No, they have never saw a single fence anywhere in the countryside. And so the locals would sometimes create new dirt freeway on ramps and off ramps in places where the Texas Department of Transportation disagreed.
I suppose another thing that Texas does well is that they are building new roads pretty fast and furiously. I mean, everywhere you go, there's road widenings and expansions and new freeway interchanges. And that's really cool. At a time when the rest of the country is kind of winding down their freeway building era, Texas is going full speed ahead. However, there's one side effect. Texas roads kind of feel half finished. Take for instance, I'm driving through downtown Dallas on one of the main boulevards that is a non-freeway road going into downtown. And I noticed that there's no sidewalks, or when there is, it's a very crappy sidewalk that's maybe two or three feet wide and overgrown with weeds. The idea of a road is it should be useful not just for me and my car, but for bicyclists, people who need to walk places, people in wheelchairs. And I feel like Texas kind of sort of rushes their projects and doesn't finish it all the way out. I'm sure in the future they'll fix that, but in the meantime, that's something Texas definitely does very wrong. And of course, more fine print on this, Texas is really good at building lots of new roads thing, is that Texas is a low tax state, and freeways are very expensive to build, and they figured out a sneaky way to get you to pay for it. Most of these new freeways are toll roads. The idea is that private equity comes in and loans the money to the state, the state charges tolls, the tolls over many, many decades pay back those loans with interest. Get ready for the ride of your life. Chisholm Trail Parkway, coming spring of 2014. In Austin, Texas, they did a toll road and it went broke. The SH-130 concessions company could default on its loans. Moody's had already downgraded the company's credit to junk status. So the Texas Department of Transportation built this parallel road to I-35. People just said, oh, I'll just take I-35. Why am I paying a toll? So Texas Department of Transportation said, well, we'll raise the speed limit to 85 miles an hour. Maybe that'll get people to pay. But you start at 85, people will do 90. I mean, look at that, 85. I would be more than happy to pay extra to drive that fast. And people didn't. Bankruptcy hearings begin tomorrow. And now they're stuck in a situation where they don't make enough money with the tolls, but if they raise the tolls, fewer people will use it and they'll make even less money. It's a mess. After the war, Houston was the sleepy city of fewer than one million Texans. But by the 1970s, residents of the Rust Belt states moved south for jobs. They went to Houston, a lot of them. Thankfully, the city's new beltway was completed just in time. Interstate 610 is this 38 mile loop, which moved at the time a growing number of Houstonians, about three million of them around town. But it also provided uh, access to empty fields for building new houses. And those fields filled up with another million people. So Houston spent the next 20 years building an even bigger loop, Beltway 8. Now that one's 88 miles long. And it opened up even more fields for building even more houses, which was good because that served the demand of another 2 million people who moved to Houston over that time. And today we see Houston building an even bigger loop 170 miles long if you drive it all the way around. The Grand Parkway. And you want to guess what's going to happen? It'll open up even more fields for housing. Now, yes, we humans do need our habitat, especially as our population grows. We need some place to live. And so I think it's worth asking, why not just sprawl all over the Texas countryside? Well, because of this one of the worst flooding disasters in American history. Some parts of the Houston area could get more than four feet. Hundreds of streets can only be navigated by boat. The worst of the flooding in Houston is still two or three days away. To think about where that water is going to go. 2017, Hurricane Harvey, it dropped 30 inches of rain in just two days in Houston, and that flooded about a third of the city. Well, it turns out those prairie grasses that we paved over they act like a natural sponge, and when there's big rainstorms, it sucks up all the water. But Houston's new suburbs tore out all those prairie grasses, replaced them with sod, and a front lawn just doesn't work very well as a sponge. And then you add in all the parking lots, roads, and freeways. None of those absorb any water at all. The water just runs off, and it needs to go someplace. Where? I don't know. And when all those wares fill up with water, you end up with a $100 billion flood 
Population growth is the underlying issue, but it was made possible by Texas's expansion of its transportation system. Thank you for watching. Please hit subscribe, and if you have a question, leave a comment below.